Good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, I will be covering that significant severe weather outbreak that continues for another day today from the Ohio Valley to the southeastern states. Then that major snowstorm will take over this weekend across the Great Lakes and the Northeast, followed by an Arctic blast that is likely to take us into the second week in March and possibly into the middle of March as we go through this video. If you guys are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel hit the subscribe button down below it helps get all of this information out to as many people as possible and if you do like daily weather break uh, breakdowns on this channel definitely hit the subscribe button here i cover all in north america the united states and canada and even the tropics during tropical weather season so hit that subscribe button down below guys and you get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel but going back to yesterday we were tracking several severe thunderstorm warnings several tornado warnings and these are yesterday's storm reports from Wednesday, March 1st, and it was a very active start to March here. We had six tornado reports, and I do have a feeling this number may be growing. We had 100 wind reports, three of those actually being uh, confirmed over 75 miles per hour, 18 hail reports for a total of 124 severe weather reports from Central Texas all the way up into portions of Central Arkansas from yesterday but if you are with me on the video don't forget to press that like button it's that thumbs up button down below again it helps to get all of this information out to as many people as possible across youtube so hit the hit the like button down below uh, guys definitely much appreciated but going through today we got some trouble again for some severe weather across the ohio valley the mid-atlantic and especially down here into the southeast but we got that snow zone up here into the great lakes and parts of the northeast starting through the day today and really take against into this weekend but first looking at the warm side of the system this is the severe weather probability for friday march 3rd today and you do see the storm prediction center has this orange shaded color here from southern indiana central portions of kentucky down through middle eastern tennessee here and into northeastern alabama northwestern georgia in the orange shaded color this is a level three of five and enhanced risk for severe storms where numerous severe thunderstorms are likely but even in the yellow shaded color surrounding that from southern Ohio into portions of central Indiana, southern Illinois, and farther southward. That is a level 2 of 5, a slight risk for severe weather. And then the darker green here is a marginal risk. That is a level one of five here that covers the Carolinas, parts of Virginia, West Virginia, getting up here and towards northern Florida and also southern Georgia throughout the day today. Looking at the individual hazards and what these storms could uh, mean for these areas, we could have a 30% hatched area for damaging winds today here from central portions of Kentucky down through middle eastern Tennessee. In some of these areas, we could see hurricane force wind gusts over 70 five miles per hour we got the large hail risk here with a lower end chance for hail the instability won't be off the charts but we definitely could still be seeing those quarter size hailstones across central eastern kentucky down into eastern portions of tennessee and then of course the tornado probability here a large zone of a two to five percent shading of tornadoes with the highest probabilities here into central and western portions of kentucky southern indiana getting down into middle and eastern tennessee northern alabama and northwestern Georgia, just northwest of the Atlanta metro area here going through the afternoon here today. Looking at the setup here, it is pretty prime for severe weather. We have those dew points advecting northward into the 60s all the way up here toward the Ohio River into Kentucky, southern Indiana, southern Ohio, and this is plenty of instability needed for severe weather. But now we look at the kinematics with this system. The mid-level jet in the 500 millibar layer is going to be pretty robust, rounding the base of this negative tilted trough we're going to have lots of mid-level wind energy providing the threat for damaging winds but also the low level jet is going to be very strong here on the eastern side of this trough and low pressure system in the 850 millibar layer that is going to provide us the threat for tornadoes as we go through the afternoon today. So looking at what we could see starting at noon time frame, we got an arcing band of strong to perhaps severe storms embedded in here, getting into central and western Kentucky, down through Middle Tennessee near the Nashville region here in the Music City, and then farther south into northern Alabama, getting through the Birmingham, Tuscaloosa region by the time we get into midday today. Deformation rainfall here on the backside of the system, but as we go through the mid-afternoon at 3 p.m., 
p.m., we definitely see a strong arcing band of storms, and this is right up near that low pressure system that will bottom out around a 975 millibar low, and this is concerning for a tornado risk, especially when you see this arcing band of storms as it pushes up into southern southwestern Ohio into eastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, and then down closer to the Atlanta metro area by mid-afternoon. That will propagate farther to the east by mid-evening at 9 p.m., and this snowstorm will really start to take over here from portions of northern Indiana, Michigan, getting through southeastern Canada here. And then rounding out across central New York State, getting into western Massachusetts and the Connecticut region as well this evening. But you do definitely want to make sure you know your safe place from tornadoes. Tornadoes are obviously very dangerous here. Safe places are storm shelters, basements. If you don't have a storm shelter or basement available to you, an interior room without windows. And again, stay away from windows is very helpful here when you have a tornado. And if you receive a tornado warning, take shelter immediately. It definitely can help out with saving your life but as we go into Saturday morning on March 4th at 6 a.m. we have that snowstorm moving across much of southeastern Canada here into Ontario Quebec Canada so it's going to be snowing in uh, Toronto it's going to be snowing in Montreal and then up here into upstate New York Vermont New Hampshire and getting up into western Maine as well before that starts to move farther east by mid-afternoon on Saturday at three o'clock and we'll start to see the precipitation end from west to east across portions of the New England region. Looking at the rainfall though with this system, it's going to be putting down some heavy rainfall across portions of the western Ohio Valley and the mid-Mississippi Valley down here. We could be seeing some very heavy rainfall amounts of 2 to as much as 4 inches down here into southern Illinois, southern Indiana here into western Kentucky, down into southeastern Missouri, and even northeastern Arkansas through Sunday here. And that is concerning for a slight to moderate risk for excessive rainfall and that flash flood probability out here is at at least a 40% chance here into southern central Indiana southeastern Illinois getting into western Kentucky, southeastern portions of Missouri near the foothills there, and then getting down farther southwestward towards the Jonesboro area into northeastern Arkansas from today into tomorrow on March 4th. So you definitely want to be on high alert from that going through those areas. But then the winter side, we have winter storm warnings across Michigan, northwestern Ohio, northern portions of Indiana, including the Gary, South Bend, Indiana area, getting up toward the Fort Wayne, Indiana region, and just south of the Chicago Chicago metro area we have those winter storm warnings and then extending over into the northeast much of upstate New York Vermont southern portions of New Hampshire western portions there of Maine and northern uh, Massachusetts getting close to the Boston area we have those winter storm warnings in the pink and even winter weather advisories here in the purples into western New York State northern Pennsylvania and getting farther to the east across Rhode Island and Connecticut going through this weekend and it's all because of this narrow stripe of snow not everybody will We'll see this across the Northeast or the Great Lakes, but who does? We'll definitely see some significant snow, and you do see we could have a narrow swath of about 5 to 8 inches worth of snow here from near the Detroit region, back across northern Indiana toward Gary, South Bend, and Fort Wayne, Indiana. And just south of the Chicago metro area, we certainly could be talking about um, maybe an inch, maybe two inches worth of snow, but not a lot here into eastern Illinois. A lot more snow, however, will be found across New England, across the northeast through this weekend, really centered on Saturday, March 4th. This is when the heaviest of the snow will be flying. And you do see some of these areas over a foot here into upstate New York, portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, coastal Maine here, and maybe down toward the Boston region, we could be seeing five to eight inches worth of snow, but you see farther to the south here into New Jersey, Pennsylvania here, and maybe Long Island. We won't see much in the way if any snowfall down here, so a sharp cutoff gradient with that snow as you go farther south across portions of southern New England and into portions of the mid-Atlantic. But as we go through Saturday as well, as that storm is exiting, we're going to see a new storm enter, the western and northwestern United States bringing very heavy mountain snow up here across the Pacific Northwest and heavy coastal rain from Washington, Oregon here into portions of northwestern California. That will spread eastward with a little bit of snow up into Montana and the Dakotas, portions of Minnesota, northwestern Iowa getting through the Sunday, March 5th time frame. 
And as we look at this here, um, as we get into tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., some heavy snow across portions of western Washington and Oregon with some coastal rain trying to move in there as well. And that continues through Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. We're seeing more of that snowfall move farther inland here across the Pacific Northwest. And then by the time we get into midday on Sunday, March 5th, a lot more of this snowfall will be spreading across Montana, north and south Dakota, and then much of the inner mountain west during this time. And we're all also going to get absolutely crushed by very heavy snowfall here into the Sierra Nevada mountains here into uh, northern and central California. And looking at this, definitely feet of snow in that zone, but across much of the Pacific Northwest, a lot of these ski resorts are going to benefit for over a foot of snow in those higher elevations, even possibly several inches accumulating up into the Dakotas, especially centered on North Dakota, back into eastern portions of Montana during that Saturday the 4th through Monday the 6th time frame here in March. And as we zoom it in here a little bit more, um, you definitely see we could be at least a, a foot and a half to up to two feet or more of snowfall in the central portions of the Sierra Nevada mountains through this weekend, getting into early next week. But thereafter, the long range pattern turns a lot colder. You see the Climate Prediction Center's forecast here from March 8th through the 12th does introduce these colder anomalies across the Pacific Northwest initially, but as we go in toward the middle of the month, or at least the second week into March, to starting out during the 10th through the 16th time frame, we see much more of this colder air pushing farther east and also farther south toward the Gulf Coast covering much of the lower 48. And looking at this with the Europeans model uh, ensembles or actually the European model itself anomalies for March 8th, we do see the colder air pushing in across western and central Canada but also across the west here as well as we dampen this ridge farther south towards south Texas and the immediate Gulf Coast and even Florida as well. And then by the time we get to March 11th, look at these temperature anomalies all the way from the uh, Canadian and, and the United States border all the way south to portions in northern Mexico near the Rio Grande Valley there and also into the Gulf Coast. Temperatures will be a good 10 to even 20 degrees below average by the time we get into the second week in March and even towards the middle of March as well. So taking a look at those temperatures on Wednesday, March 8th, yeah, we could be in the single digits and teens up here for high temperatures across Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas and much of Southern Canada at this point. And even some colder temperatures farther south across the Ohio Valley and the Missouri Valley, barely getting above freezing. And looking at those wind chills on Wednesday, March 8th, definitely could be talking about single digits below zero here across not only southern Canada, but also parts of eastern Montana, the Dakotas, and even single digits to teens for wind chills back into Minnesota, Nebraska, and South Dakota by the time we get in towards the middle of next week. And then that starts to move farther south here towards the Gulf Coast and the East Coast by the time we get into next weekend on Saturday, March 11th. Much more of these areas across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and even the Missouri Valley will see temperatures well below freezing and back into the teens and 20s here with even single digits above zero back here into the Dakotas. Taking a look at those wind chills next Saturday on March 11th, look at these very bitterly cold wind chills, especially for March standards. We could be as cold as 15 to 20 degrees below zero here into the Dakotas, western portions of Minnesota, and even the freezing line with those wind chills go all the way south to nearly the Gulf Coast by next weekend. So do bundle up as we go into next week. It also will be more active. So with the cold air moving in, it's going to get more active through the March 12th time frame and even the March 16th time frame. And you do see much as California, the Pacific Southwest, and the, uh, the southern part of the lower 48 will be favored, especially getting towards the middle of March. And if we have enough of this cold air moving in, we could see snow farther south, including parts of the central, southern plains, and even the parts of the Tennessee Valley as we get towards the middle of March. So to recap my weather forecast, a significant severe weather event is possible today from the Ohio Valley to the southeast. You definitely want to be weather aware here later on today. A major snowstorm across the Great Lakes and Northeast this weekend with plenty of places seeing over six inches and possibly over a foot of snow, especially across the new, uh, the Northeast. And then an Arctic blast is looking likelier as we head in towards the second week in March and even towards the middle of March here toward the 15th and 16th time frame. So we'll be tracking that here on Weather on the Go. Thanks for watching, everybody. I definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily 
daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Friday, everybody. A great weekend ahead, and I will see you all in the next video.